Well, my dear friends, tragedy struck me today. A minor tragedy, but a tragedy nonetheless. I completely recorded this story, edited it all down to get rid of all my mistakes, and then, boom, crash, bang. It didn't save properly. So, here we are with take two of this strange and wonderful story from Dr. Creepin's Vault. The subreddit I set up so that you could send stories and I could read them all for you. Well, my dear friends, this has been a hell of a journey just to get this one to you, so I think we all deserve to sit back and relax with our favourite drinks and listen. I don't give a damn where you go. Just get the hell out. A powerful voice boomed from the doorway, and several random objects flew through the air, missing Alex as he stormed off down the driveway. Father had always been a raging alcoholic, and had a habit of throwing tantrums, but this one was the worst yet. Alex had failed history three grading periods in a row, breaking his promise to at least pass his classes. It's not my fault. Mr. Thomas is the most boring and confusing teacher ever, Alex muttered under his breath as he pulled on his hood, fighting off the chill of the mid-November air. Pulling out his phone, the steaming teen dialed up his good friend, Red. Yo, dude. I need a place to crash for the weekend. My parents kicked me out again. Alex sighed into the phone. No problem, bro. I've got you covered. His friend replied on the other end. Just come on over to my place. My mom's gone on another week-long bender, so she won't be home to care. Alex could always rely on Red, ever since they'd been nine years old. Coming from similarly broken homes, Red and Alex had a mutual understanding of each other, finding comfort in each other's company, along with many mind-altering substances they could get their hands on. By the time Alex arrived at Red's beaten-up shack of a house, Red had already invited other guests. Upon opening the door, Alex saw who'd shown up. Before him, Red, the short and lanky ginger, with skin as pale as paper, smiling widely, showing off the gaps in his teeth from one too many fistfights. Inside the house, Alex spotted Eric, a massive, stout, 18-year-old, who was like the older brother of the whole group. His beard had grown in when he was twelve, so Eric had always looked like a huge mountain of a man. Lastly, but certainly not least, there was Patricia, or Paddy, as Alex called her. Paddy was Eric's little sister, two years younger, and while he didn't enjoy what she did in her spare time, he did want to keep her safe, since she had a bad habit of catching the attention of thug types. While younger than the rest of the group, Paddy stood a good six inches taller than Alex, but she never wasted time rubbing that in his face. Hey, shorty. I'm glad you could make it to the party. Red's got some good shit for us tonight, chimed Paddy as she sat on the stained couch, sipping from a flask. Smiling softly, Alex stepped in as Red closed the door behind him. Yeah, the lady speaks the truth, my good man. I have procured a new brand of substance from yonder pipe shop. Behold! Red held out several packets, all labelled the same. C9. Cotton candy clouds. Just read the packaging. Depicts what would look to be clouds made of cotton candy, <laughs> as the name suggests. C9. What on earth is that? Alex inquired just as Paddy draped her arms over his shoulders. Ah, C9 is the newest and hottest thing on the block, Daddy-o. One puff of this and you'll be as high as the peak of Mount Everest, Red replies, while giving Alex the finger guns, changing his mannerisms as per usual. It's a synthetic, supposed to mimic the effects of pot, but it's crazy cheap, Paddy added, and Red nodded in agreement, tossing the packages to Eric, who sat in the oversized recliner, which still looked small compared to him. Eric, my man, do me the honors and stuff those pipes for me, Red chimed, as he struck an overly dramatic pose. Eric grimaced, 
Sinan to read that he was tired of him bringing in new things around his sister. Chill, bro. It's totally safe. It wouldn't be legal if it was dangerous, right? Patty retorted with a chuckle, drawing a sigh of defeat from Eric. He just couldn't say no to his little sister. While Eric started stuffing the pipes with what looked like sawdust, Paddy pulled Alex to the couch and pushed him down, sitting next to him, but clutching his arm. Tonight, my friends, we explore new territories, announced the overly zealous Red as he took a stuffed pipe, wasting no time in lighting it up and puffing hard. The foul stench of burnt cotton candy filled the air, making Alex's nose scrunch up. Receiving his own, Alex placed the pipe in his mouth, and Paddy lit it for him, and he inhaled. Burning smoke filled his lungs, scorching everything it touched all the way down, eliciting violent coughs from Alex. Drinking water to expel the horrendous taste from his mouth, Alex watched as Paddy and Eric joined in, taking puffs of their own. For several minutes, the group felt nothing taking repeated puffs on the pipes in hopes of speeding up the process. Ah, oh, Red, I thought you said this was good shit, Alex scoffed, dumping out the ashes from his chili pepper-shaped pipe. Shit, man, I was told this was the hottest shit in town right now. Maybe we just can't feel it since. Alex looked up at Red, expecting him to finish his sentence but all Alex could see on his friend's face was nothing. It wasn't that he was expressionless, just that, well, he had no face. Blinking rapidly, Alex realized Red still had facial features, but they were blurred out, as if he was in one of those police shows where witnesses wanted to keep their identities concealed. Alex couldn't remember Red's face now for the life of him, Looking around, he realized that the same thing was happening with Patty and Eric. A numbness overtook Alex. He neither felt nor heard anything, aside from a steady and rapid thumping from his chest, like a muffled drum. Soon after, his vision started to fade to blackness. It was a warm and comforting darkness, like when one falls asleep. But the tranquil feeling of security was quickly lost, as Alex realized, he was back home, staring into the scarred door to the hallway closet. A sturdy-looking board leaned against the doorframe, looking to fit in metal hooks screwed into the wall on either side of the door. Dread overtook the boy, as he felt an imposing force behind him, pushing him backwards towards the slowly opening closet. I told you, boy. You mouth after me again, and I'd put you in the hole. <laughs> Consider yourself lucky. A deep, rumbling voice bellowed from the force pushing him through the doorway. Panic set in as he struggled against the force, but much like an animal fighting against the current of a river, his efforts were in vain. Behind him, the door swung shut, and the loud thud of wood hitting metal rang out casting Alex into silence and darkness. Pounding on the door, Alex cried out in fear, begging for freedom, but the old world wooden door held fast, not relenting to the boy's feeble attempts to break it down. Alex screamed until his voice went hoarse, and then all he could produce was a pathetic squeak. Within the closet, which acted as Alex's prison, there was no sign of light. A darkness as thick as pitch enveloped the terrified boy. Hours upon hours of solitude in the endless void of shadow had taken its toll on him, scrambling his sense of time and reality. Just as countless memories of days spent in the prison of the closet flooded Alex's mind, suddenly the imposing, claustrophobic grip on him was gone. Quickly, he got to his feet, scanning his surroundings. Much like in the closet, Alex stood in a smothering darkness, that is, until he turned to see the azure glow of a fountain. An oddly out-of-place fixture in the dark, 
It stood tall and proud. Many gargoyles spewed glowing water from their mouths, but made no splashing of water on water. Atop the granite fountain stood a figure, human in shape, but completely void of any features. No hair, clothes, nose, ears, not even any eyes. Just a wide grin. A row of bleached and jagged teeth splitting open the tightly pulled onyx-coloured skin on the face. An expression far too wide to be anywhere near human. In the faint glow of the luminous water, Alex could see the skin of the being's forehead split open with a sickening tear. Putrid grey fluid leaking from the newly formed wound. Splitting further open, the break in skin revealed an inhumanly large eyeball, the size of a baseball, glaring back at Alex. Before any words could be spoken, the solid footing under Alex gave way, plunging him into murky water, forcing him to hold his breath. Coldness gripped Alex as he heard faint voices, though he couldn't make out what was said. Somehow, the voices seemed oddly familiar. Several hands pushed against his face and chest, growing more frantic as time went on. Alex couldn't move to fend off the groping hands. They felt like they were gripping every part of him. A burning sensation grew in his chest as his lungs ached for air. Voices grew frantic and jumbled, like a crowd of people yelling over each other. Suddenly, the hands grabbed him all over, and Alex felt them pulling him through the water quickly. An overpowering force slammed him on his back at the bottom of whatever body of water he was getting dragged through. As quickly as it all began, the water vanished, and Alex took in a breath of stale, musty air. Looking up, he saw ceiling tiles and felt the cold, hard tile of the school hall floor. Many students were muttering to each other in tongues Alex had never heard before. Having pulled himself to his feet, he swung his head around to see all the students staring at him, their gazes piercing straight through him. The stairs surrounded Alex. He could feel himself getting impaled by judgment as the muttering rose in volume. Through the cacophony of noise, Alex could make out one word. Face! His hands immediately shot up to his face, and he felt something like slime, with bits of something floating in the ooze. With haste, Alex bolted to the restroom, which was, luckily, unoccupied, and once inside, he flipped on the light. Horror struck Alex as he finally saw what all the other students were talking about. His face was melting, much like a candle in front of a blowtorch. His skin turned a sickly grey and began to peel off his face. His nose dangled from a thread of muscle as a rancid odour filled his open nasal cavity. Though Alex watched in horror, he felt no pain. The decaying flesh of his face felt alien and wrong. Fingers dug into flesh and tore it away in a frenzy. Globs of decaying skin and muscle covered the porcelain sink in a grey fluid. His heart pounded painfully hard as he frantically clawed at his face, the same grey fluid oozing from between the muscle fibres and dripping onto the sink. Vision in his left eye faded as the eyeball melted into a jelly, slipping from its socket and into the sink. Nails scraped against bone as the last remaining shreds of flesh melted away. Using his index finger, Alex pried out his right eye, and, with an audible pop, the eyeball was ejected from its home and fell down the drain. Alex's vision followed the eyeball down the drain into complete darkness. Then, once again, Alex stood before the fountain. The ominous figure was still standing motionless atop it. His hands frantically groped his face as an inspection, finding his features to be untouched, as normal as usual. Returning his gaze to the ebony figure, 
Alex saw that several more wounds had torn their way through this being's skin, revealing piercing eyes all over the body, from the head to the legs. No part of the figure's body was left untouched by the multiplying eye. The hole opened up under Alex, and he fell, landing hard on his back in a heap. Dazed, Alex looked around him and felt something familiar. Grain. All around him. Grain. Realization hit him, and Alex knew he was inside a grain silo. One summer, when he was six, he had played with his cousins on his uncle's farm. While playing, Alex had climbed on top of the silo, trying to hide from his cousin by jumping into the grain. What he hadn't realized was that grain can act like quicksand, and it engulfed him rapidly. Alex kicked and screamed as he sunk deeper into the dry grain. He heard his cousin's voice calling to him from atop of the silo. Each kernel of grain put a tiny amount of pressure on Alex, each trying to push him down. Altogether, they forced the boy deeper. Having flailed his arms, Alex tried as hard as he could to free himself from the impending prison, only succeeding in burying himself deeper. Taking a final breath, Alex's head plunged underneath the grain. Now the grain faded away to soil, and Alex's eyes snapped open, only for him to be blinded by freshly disturbed dirt. Clarity hit him as he clamped his eyes shut, trying to wipe his eyes, but his hands were held in place by the earth around him. His lungs began to burn for air, each attempt to draw in breath was met with more dirt. A chorus of voices screamed at him to escape, to go up. With burning muscles, Alex fought to lift his arms. Though it took all his efforts, he managed to shift through the loose soil. Next came his legs, the dirt proving a formidable foe to overcome. Slowly worming his way up, Alex could feel the surface just out of reach. And then, once again, Alex stood before the fountain, but with eyes of various sizes surrounding him on all sides in the darkness. The fountain ran grey with the same putrid fluid pouring from the black figure that was now perched atop the highest gargoyle. All the statues in the fountain turned their heads in unison and stared directly at Alex, all yelling in alien tongues. A deafening cacophony of screams barreled into Alex, forcing him to clamp his hands over his ears. The floating eyes glowed red with hatred as the grin on the black figure grew wider and wider, splitting what remained of its face until the bottom jaw flopped open, revealing thousands of rows of undulating, razor-sharp fangs extending all the way down the abyss that was its throat. Alex sat up in bed, and screamed, flailing his arms in a cold sweat. Whoa, come down there, buddy. A familiar voice sounded, and a door opened. Alex stopped and saw that he was in Red's room, lying in his bed. Turning, Alex saw that his best friend was standing at the door with a steaming bowl of what Alex presumed to be soup. <laughs> you all right, buddy? Red inquired walking over to Alex and sitting on the bed. Eee, you scared the shit out of all of us, man. You completely passed out. Alex rubbed his eyes as the haze started to lift from his mind. He suddenly recalled that the night before he and his friends had tried that new C9 crap. Bro, I think you need to sober up a while. That fucked you up. You've been out for two days. Red added as he looked deep into Alex's eyes checking to make sure his friend was all right. A rumbling sound came from Alex's stomach, malnutrition setting in. Yeah, I knew you'd be hungry by the time you woke up, so well, I made you some soup, Red said with a smile as he handed Alex the bowl. A wave of relief swept over Alex as he took everything in. He was out, out of that hell, done with that trip. Maybe he should take Red's advice and sober up for a while. Could do him some good. 
Alex had thought this as he brought the spoon into his mouth. Then he immediately spat it out. Dirt. Alex was eating dirt. The once mouth-watering scent of soup was replaced with the musty scent of soil. Alex blinked, and he was instantly back in the darkness, gasping for air only for his nostrils to be filled with more loose soil. He had never left his hole in the ground. He'd imagined all of the events in his friend's room. His lungs burned for air, and his muscles ached from lack of oxygen. Panic set in as Alex flailed in the dirt, digging his way up once more as his mind swam. Visions of moments flashed before his eyes. The long nights spent in the hole. The beatings his father never spared him from. The apathetic looks his mother gave him. That time he sewed his pants in class by accident. Walking down dark alleyways at night with homeless man following him. These and many more flooded Alex's mind as he fought for survival. He felt the cold evening air on his hand as he broke to the surface, gripping stable ground as he pulled with all his might. His muscles began to fail him, deprived of oxygen and overtaxed from the effort. All thoughts slowed to a crawl as a biting cold slowly enveloped Alex, drawing him deeper into a sleep he couldn't fight any more. The sound of birds chirping stirred Alex awake. His eyes fluttered open as golden sunlight poured through his window and into his room. Sitting up quickly, Alex felt around, feeling the clean linens of his bed. Was he out? For good? Was this yet another dream, just a figment of his imagination? Well, it felt real enough, though, so that was good enough for now. Alex spent the next half hour collecting his thoughts, remembering the events of the previous night in vague detail. He honestly couldn't tell whether or not what he went through was an hallucination or a dream. After dressing himself and grabbing his phone, Alex noticed he had a message from Red. Hey, hope you made it home all right. Gee, last night was nuts, bro. Be sure to come round and grab your hat. With a sigh, Alex set out towards Red's house once again. Arriving at the shack and having knocked on the door, Alex realized that Red wasn't home. Using the spare key under a rock near the door, Alex let himself in. Man, the place was trashed, even more so than usual. Broken glass and candy wrappers laid scattered all over the floor, painting an odd picture of what had occurred the night before. Spotting his hat on the couch, Alex walked over and picked it up. And then he stopped, frozen in place. Slowly turning his head, Alex looked out the back sliding glass door, noticing a large hole in the backyard, complete with scattered and freshly dug dirt. Alex's heart sank. That hole hadn't been there the day before. What do you make of that one? Quite a tale, wasn't it? Um, very interesting take on... Uh, <laughs> whatever, it was an interesting take on. But I enjoyed reading that one, and I hope uh, you enjoyed it too, given that it took me two whole takes to get that to you. Well, we'll back on Wednesday with another story, and of course you're going to join me, aren't you? Tell me you will. Go on. You will, won't you? Yes, of course you will. Special shout-out to all of you on the night shift. Don't work too hard. Hope these stories help the time pass a bit more quickly. Well, I will be back again very soon. Until then, sweet dreams and bye-bye.
Thank you so much for choosing to spend your time listening to me. Now, if you enjoyed the Dr. Creepin experience, then come find me on Facebook. Come chat with me on Twitter. Listen to the background music and download it if you like on SoundCloud. Drop by the store, pick up a t-shirt. And, importantly, if you've got a story you'd like me to read, send it to Dr. Creepin's Vault, the subreddit I set up so that I could read your stories. Now, Looking forward to seeing you all again real soon. So, come check me out, okay? <laughs>